girls and boys, get ready to learn. Sound, being one of our five senses, has fascinated people through the ages. What exactly is sound and how do we hear? When you hear anything, a voice, a bird song, a dog's bark, your brain has translated it from its original format, sound waves, so that you can identify the possible source. The sound itself has traveled through the air to the hearing organs, your ears, as invisible waves. Sound waves are produced when vibration disturbs the air. You can think of air as a fluid with molecules that can be pushed around. When something physically acts on the air, like vocal cords for instance, the movement of the vocal cords pushes on the air molecules. The force compresses the air, molecules bump into the ones next to them, and so on down the line until the wave of pressure reaches your ears. Imagine yourself pushing on a waterbed. If you push on it repeatedly, you'll see the resulting waves move away from your hand. So sound waves are the product of vibrations. The number of vibrations per second determines the frequency, and frequency determines the pitch, or the note. Right now, I'm gonna show you something really cool, a method for visualizing sound waves and the relationship between sound and air pressure. And it involves fire, so... How could I go wrong? Anyway, this contraption here is called a Rubens tube. No, it has nothing to do with the Rubik's cube or a Rubens sandwich. It's called a flame tube. It allows us to create standing waveforms that oscillate at the frequency of the sounds being played out of a speaker. Heinrich Rubens first built one of these things back in 1904. It consists of a six-foot length of three-inch diameter aluminum pipe that's been drilled with lots of little holes spaced about a half an inch apart. It has a fuel source, propane, and a speaker attached to one end. Let me show you how it works. I'll fill the pipe with propane, get it going, get it flowing out of the holes, and then I'll light it, and we should get a bunch of mini torches now that's pretty fun on its own, but watch as I start playing a pure low frequency tone through the speaker. Turn it up a little. There we go. The wave that you see produced is a direct result of the compression and decompression of the gas inside the tube by the repeating vibrations. This 200 hertz tone has a wavelength just about equal to the length of the tube. Now watch as I double the frequency to 400 hertz. You can see that the wavelength changes with the frequency. Now here's 800 hertz, and I'll turn it up a little bit. We're going to go to 800. Dun, dun, dun. But now let's do something really fun with this. Instead of just listening to pure tones, let's try some music. I think this Reuben tube is going to end up in my backyard. Back to you guys. <laughs>